We talked the other day about the capabilities of the 429 as a corporate transport, but there's more to it than that. It's a triple threat. We're going to look at the second element of that, its capabilities as a HEMS platform. Where I'm lucky today is I'm being joined by Steve Solis. He's Bell's HEMS segment manager and the guy who knows everything about the aircraft's capability in that deployment. Steve. Thanks, Gideon. I appreciate it. We're here to talk about the Bell 429 on its HEMS mission, and one of the things you will notice immediately is the size of the opening of this cargo compartment. It is the largest in class, and this is something that's very, very um, appreciated by our flight crews. You know, not just the size of the opening to bring patients in and also load your equipment and load your crews, but also it has the capability of having a flat, flat floor, and with the skid height, it's very easy to load patients. It's ergonomically a little bit easier to use this side loading uh, process uh, when putting patients inside to help keep the health of your crew in mind at all times. Uh, as you see in this interior here, there's many different uh, vendors that will provide the interior modification for a HEMS mission. This one happens to be Aerolite. Aerolite is based out of Switzerland and also they do have a large uh, uh, presence in the United States as well. This articulating uh, lit, uh, litter loading system is very easy to use. What it can do is it actually can move your patient up, up closer to your caregiver if you need to have some airway intervention. Also, because of the large cabin, you can actually reach the lower extremities of the patient, which is a huge benefit in case you have some problems in flight with your patient. A lot of the different vendors have pretty similar loading systems. This one comes out, locks into place and you're able to move this patient, patient very easily with just three to four people onto the litter or on, uh, onto the gurney at the hospital or from the gurney at a scene onto the aircraft and then secure them and then put it back in here and get ready to depart the flight. And that's really what's critical, isn't it? You talked earlier there, Steve, about positioning the patient so to provide, for example, you mentioned airway access or if you have some traumatic disease, uh, lower extremities, again, the healthcare provider can reach, even though it's a massive cabin with a more secure space and getting that access to the patient. Also notice there's an array of monitoring equipment. Can you talk a little bit more about that? Absolutely. Um, as I stated before, everything here is customizable. So each vendor will work with the customer and see exactly what type of equipment do they do they carry and where do they want it placed. And so this one, uh, this is Air Zermatt. Air Zermatt does a lot of high altitude uh, mountain rescue, and uh, they're staying pretty lean. They have two seats here. They usually have a physician and a paramedic and then one um, pilot with the interior uh, medical equipment and one hour of gas. They're at a lean 3,000 kilos when they're taking off the fly, which is really great. It enables them to go ahead and fly up to 15,000 feet to rescue. On board, they have a, uh, a ventilator, a monitor defibrillator, and also they have two um, IV pumps there that meet their needs for their patients. And so these are set up exactly how they want to by the vendor. They talk to them, they talk to the medical crew, they talk to the leadership, and um, they're able to help build it out this way. Some folks have it, so well, they'll put the monitor up here on the top of this um, this, uh, this uh, shelving unit. A lot of times in other configurations, you'll have two seats here facing aft with the shelving unit in the middle and the monitor on top. Whatever makes it easier, however they feel comfortable with it, each of the vendors will go ahead and accommodate that. And that's the beauty of the aircraft. It's so wide open, we can do anything to uh, meet the needs of the patient and the uh, needs of the mission. Well, there you go. It's got the flexibility, it's got the space. And that's, all, that's what it's all about when it comes to tailoring the aircraft to a particular mission. There is an assumption, of course, that it's one patient per mission. But, of course, we know that the reality of large-scale road traffic accidents or other type of events, you need more capabilities than just one aircraft, one patient. Steve, can you talk about a little bit more about the 429 and the options you have there? Absolutely. And so this uh, this configuration obviously is for one patient, but because of the size of the cabin, some services throughout the world have it configured for two litters uh, to be able to load it in here. Obviously, that's going to be determined by medical directors and the mission profile of the service. 
you don't want to take too high acuity patients in there. However, if you have the ability to take two moderately ill patients there that don't need a lot of intervention, you can actually take two patients to the hospital, which actually cuts down on transport times for that second patient. Additionally, this aircraft has an option to have clamshell doors. Arizamont does not use the clamshell doors because it saves them weight, and it actually it saves them cost. They're very lean, they're very smart. Uh, program and uh, everybody actually in the chems industry is always looking to save wherever they can because aviation is an expensive uh, uh, intervention. Yes. So there you have it, the second leg of the 429's triple threat capability. It's a HEMS platform that gives flexibility. You have volume, you have payload. You can tailor it to your type of operation and your type of mission. Thanks Steve for your insight. Always great to talk to you.